the most important part is your hook. That still applies still today. Like if I can say a thing in three words instead of five paragraphs, I'm gonna say it in three words. Every single person I know with a podcast wants to grow their show. If that first five seconds doesn't get them to understand, build a rapport, qualify them, they're not gonna go on. But that is what will give you that exponential leap. Ethics come first. Don't write for scammy shit. That's my only thing, because that will like weigh your soul down. Yeah. Yes, you make a couple of bucks, but trust me, it's not worth the long term psychological aspects that you get from actually going, no, like, oh shit, that's a lot of money, but it was a terrible idea because karma will bite you in the ass. It just will. So I always tell people, like, there's only one thing I really want you to focus on. Write a good fucking sales letter. Because the reality is if you can write a sales letter, everything else falls into place. I don't know how to write email. Guess what? You know how to write email now. I don't know how to write VSL. Guess what? You know how to write VSL now. I don't know how to do a webinar. Guess what? You now know how to do a webinar. Why? Because everything falls from the idea of this Rosetta Stone called the sales letter. Once you understand the language of copy, you understand what... And by the way, when I say we say long form, we don't mean the whole thing has to be explained out with 15,000 different things. It means you cover every argument possible in your letter, but you keep it concise. Like if I can say a thing in three words instead of five paragraphs, I'm going to say it in three words because it's easy to actually explain. You want to talk to a 10 year old here. You got to keep their attention because the average person you're talking to people are 10 years old, really, um, in terms of like that sweet spot of what there is. So I'd say if I was to coach anyone, this anyone, it's like, OK, what are you going to do here? First of all, get good at writing sales letters, but pick whatever market makes you happy. Find the one, like, and the criteria for it is, does it have money? Does it have competition? Is it selling well? If the answer is yes to those three, guess what? You now have a marketplace you can walk into to be like, hi, I see that you're a restaurant. Hi, I see that you're an info product creator. Hi, I see that you're a coach or an expert. I want to write a sales letter for your program because I actually really enjoy it and believe what you're doing. Just test it. Let me know how it runs. And hey, if it works out, then pay me some money. If you're one of those people that's like, actually, you know what? I need to get some money up front because that really motivates me. Barter a deal, say I'll take half up front now and half on delivery. If that doesn't work, then say you take 25% up front and whatever it is. And if you really want to make a sales argument like, oh, you're unproven, blah, blah, blah. Here's your sales argument. I'll give it to you right now. The reality is many of these copywriters actually don't want to work three or four clients at once. They want to work one client to actually give it them be- give it their best. Tell your client this. Hey, listen, I don't want to work on four separate client cases at the same time. I want to work on one. If I have to spread my energy over four separate places, I'm not giving anyone my best. And that means that I'm going to fail you. I'm going to fail three other people. What I'd rather do is I take half the money up front, focus entirely on you, give you something I know you can run with. And hey, if it's an absolute winner, great, we move forward. If it's not, after you pay me 100% and it doesn't work out, guess what? I'll do two more revisions for you. I'll go in deeper on the research and we'll see what we come out. At the end of it, you'll have me working three times over or you'll have like an absolute, you'll have a winner or you'll have me work three times over. Simple. There's definitely a lot of different ways there. So I will break down a few of them um, and we'll go through each of these one by one. Because I, I too, similar to you, Maria, I've had a lot of supplement companies come to me and say like, hey, we want to do a, something with podcasting because we know there's something there. We know there's our audience. Our audience is on is there. We just need yeah. to figure out a way to, to tap into that. So the first direct way, you don't have to start a podcast in order to tap into the power of them. Um, I was actually writing about this the other day, but like if you're a supplement company and you want to get out in front of more podcasts, the obvious thing to do is to sponsor the um, not so obvious thing or next, next, like the sponsor an actual podcast, right? Um, the better way to go about it would be to identify like who are the, like the top maybe five to 10 shows and then figure out how can we make an affiliate, make some kind of affiliate partnership with them. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest secret I would say to podcasts and making that being successful at that is understanding what podcasters want. And every single person I know with a podcast wants to grow their show. So if you're an affiliate, if you're, if you run a supplement company, you've got a list you're mailing or you're mailing affiliate offers to, why don't you go around, reach out to podcasters and say, Hey, we have 10,000 people who are interested in health and fitness and are they're between the ages of 35 and 50. What if we sent a podcast, we sent like your podcast out to them in exchange for promotion on my show exchange for promotion of our, our product on the show, because instead of paying your hard earned marketing dollars, like, why don't you just organize a deal like that? If you're a sub sub company, it's cheaper for you. It's going to get you in front of their audience. Um, and it could build a longer term relationship. 
So, I mean, just thinking outside the box, we, we don't have to spend any money. We can just promote their podcast and say this is one of our recommended shows to, you know, to our lists, which we've already spent money on building. Yeah. Um, because every podcaster wants to grow. Um, and they, they want money too, like everyone else, but like that's a that's actually a harder thing for them to do. It's easier for, probably for them to make money than it is for them to grow up, get in front of 10,000 people that are yes. potentially you know, new listeners. Um so just from, from a supplements, uh, uh, you know, like a direct marketing company like that standpoint, like, uh, and I'll give you, I'll give you some, some really good resources for that. Uh, a couple of good ones are going to like a show or a place called listennotes.com and actually typing in your keywords, like wellness. Um, you know, it could be just type in your avatar, like, you know, fitness for women over 40 or fitness for men over 50 and look at what podcasts come up, look how big they are and see if you can and reach out to them. Nice. So yeah, the, the two I would go to is listen notes and chartable.com. You can see all the rankings. You can see, um, how big they are. Um, and you can, and on listen notes for sure. I know you can actually scrape emails so you can get all their emails wow. for free. Um, nice. and, and yeah, so it's a really easy way to do it. You need a VA or someone to, to, to tackle this, but that's the first way without even having to get sticky or get it too deep into the podcasting space. Just go reach out to those and offer them to promote. If you have a good idea and I don't think it's a good idea on it, let's say it's an email, send it. But hey, if it hits, you get all the praise. But if you don't, you're in deep doo-doo. <laughs> there you go. Well, actionable yeah. results. I do. I have some kind of geeky questions of things that like, just how yeah. things have changed over time. Are you still using some of the same strategies that you were using back then? Has YouTube like not really changed in terms of how you produce and how you put up content and all that stuff? Or has it like radically changed since since you started? Personally, I haven't been posting high con like content videos, like weekly basis. I've been doing mainly just YouTube ads, writing VSLs, but, but what's changed and I'm not running the ads, but when it comes to writing the YouTube ads, pretty, pretty similar formats. So we had, you know, we, we, we would target the three sections in a, in a YouTube ad, we would hit the impulse buyers, which are people you know, like yourself, you love shoes. So if this new pairs of shoes come out and you see in the magazine, your heart instantly goes, I need to just get it. Once I, if I see it in the store, I'm probably going to get it. So that doesn't take a long message. So we would do the impulse buyer call to actions. And then we would explain the logic to justify your impulse. Cause you really just need to be told why, you know, the reason why you really wanted to shoot, you just need confirmation. So the logic confirmation and then going into the testimonial and then the, um, the emotional side of it. So it's the same format, except now you'll see them being rearranged where you take the testimonial first and then explain the impulse later or just, yeah. So really similar, but at the end of the day, the most important part is your hook. And I think, and yeah, and that still applies still today. In fact, I've talked to um, ad agencies and they, they, they don't realize that that hook, even though it's su such common sense, they don't realize that hook is the most important part. And just the first sentence could change the way your whole ad convert just one word or one sentence. It, let's pretend I'm a single guy. I'm younger. I'm a single guy. I'm looking to pick up uh, this lovely lady there. I could, I could be the most educated, the kindest, the smartest, whatever, and done all this work to build myself up. It, if my exterior, you know, the first five seconds that she sees me, if I'm not well put, my hair is not done, maybe I won't get her to even learn about my insides. And that's the same with your ads. You have the best information in the world, but if you can't, if that first five seconds doesn't get them to understand, build a rapport, qualify them, show your, uh, um, uh, show your uh, whoever you are, you know, they're not going to go on. So that's why you got to spend most of your time on the hooks. If we had a, if I had a day, if I had five hours to write an ad, I would spend about three to four hours just just keep cleaning up that first sentence, that first part. Investing in a mastermind, whatever the stretch is for you, because they're available at any tier, a couple thousand dollars a year, all the way up fifty, hundred thousand dollars a year, whatever it is. But that is what will give you that exponential leap and those connections that you wouldn't otherwise have. And when people say stuff like, and it's not many folks in our community anymore. But I remember when I was a, a beginner and so I was hanging around more beginners, they would want everything to be free. Why are you, if you're so great and you could teach us all this, well, why wouldn't 
You teach it for free. But the irony is, is the person saying that also wants to make money. Yeah, well, it's like, well, no, no wonder you're not making money because you want everything to be free. And then therefore everything is free to you, but it's really nothing. You really have nothing, right? Yeah. So I think of it as the pipe, right? There's just one money pipe. Okay. And if you're clogged on the end that goes out, the receiving end is clogged. It's the same fucking pipe. Yeah. So big believer in, in pay to play and pay to get into these rooms. Um that you norm, normally wouldn't get it. Well, I mean, it, it it comes down to, and and this is like every marketer knows this. When you you have somebody sign up for something for free, nobody shows up, right? You're doing something, nobody's going to show up because it's it, it, like you're not vested, right? Like when you're charging, you know, hundred or two hundred, whatever you know your market is, and what is affordable to them, people are going to remember and show up. Hope you found today's session valuable. If you have any questions for me or just want to connect, please feel free to visit my website, mariasparagis.com. That's M-A-R-I-A-S-P-A-R-A-G-I-S.com. I'd love to hear what you're working on. So drop me a line on any hot button issues your business is experiencing. And remember, don't worry about failure. You only have to be right once.